thanks. It's very exciting to get to that point. Um, I think it's going to be fine. The conference, I mean. Um, okay, so uh, the title of the uh, of this session, uh, we were cont contemplating between a couple of titles, uh, evaluation of visualization and so on. Uh, the one that stuck, but uh, it, but we haven't actually used was the dark side of visualization, which I kind of like. So um, as far as I'm concerned, that is the title of the session. And I'm going to talk about disinformation visualization, how to lie with data viz. Uh, a, a, bit, a bit about the background of this uh, research. Um, I found myself in a pretty weird position when I was asked, I was invited to give a, a guest, guest critics in somewhere else. Uh, on, on for a data visualization class, and one by one, I saw the students coming up and showing their um, initial uh, and let's say raw uh, experiments in the in the wild world of uh, data visualization, and and really trying to convince us, and even worse, convince themselves that there's like amazing insight there, and. And there wasn't enough, and I felt like, oh, I'm, I, you know, on one hand, I want to say uh, uh, there are problems here and uh, here and problems there, but um, but, but basically, I I, I, I feel like I, f I felt like we were putting them in a position that, that was setting them up to fail, and an academic uh, environment can actually enjoy experiments, the kind of other experiments, like instead of teaching students how to tell the truth with data, teach students how to lie with data, and, and, and then uh, that would help them understand the biases of, uh, of uh, data visualization. And, and it, started, it, it started as a workshop, um, and I've gotten to give this uh, workshop in a couple of places, including here in Chinca, and, um, and from that a presentation and, uh, and a paper. So, so that's the background. Um, so anybody uh, identifies this? This is the world. Um, but this is also um, a very specific photograph. Um, anybody identifies it? iPhone, nice, love it. Uh, this is the blue marble. It's true, it's the same picture. Uh, the blue marble, it, 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 th th this picture has gotten the 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 uh, the name Blue Marble. It's the it's the first uh, photograph of the Earth in its f uh, uh, when it's completely lit from space. It was taken by the Apollo 17. If I'm not mistaken, it was 72 or 73. Um, and when and when the astronauts ca came back to Earth with with uh, the film that was film back then. Um, they uh, produced the, the picture and that's what they got. Um, what's wrong with this picture? It's upside down, it's upside down. Um, well, is it upside down? Um, but, but yeah, w when they looked at the, that picture and they said, oh, that we can't publish that. Um, and what they did is they switched it around. They switched it around and this is the actual picture that NASA uh, published because this is the right way to see the world or rather that is the way we got used to seeing the world and and, and that, that that is the way that that emphasizes what uh, our expectations of how should the world look from space right um, but why should the world world look like that why shouldn't it look like that there's nothing scientifically wrong about an upside-down, so-called upside-down picture of the world. The, the south doesn't need to be in the bottom, and the north doesn't need to be at the top. This is a construct of the way uh, we've been drawing maps. This is the, a construct of, of, of visualization of the world. But when... Who... who raise your hand if you're uh, willing to change the map right now to this. Really? Like this is, I, I, f w w when, when I look at this, it, it looks uh, per perverted. Like there's something so strong about our, uh, our, our the fixation of, of, of the image of the world. This is more, more than an icon. This is like looking at a face and seeing so something like the eyes are not where they're supposed to be. Or it, it, it's so fundamentally uh, ingrained within, within our perspective of 
the world, and this is a graphic image, right? Um, a graphic image that only had it, its photographic uh, or slightly, and by photographic I mean si slightly more uh, scientific uh, evidence, um, I would say like 40 years ago, right? Um, so that's interesting. So the DIKW model uh, uh, for, for knowledge is based on is this idea of at the basis we have data and then um, on top of it information, knowledge and wisdom. Um, and and, and what, what it means is that the data would be for example red. What red? Red, just red. Um, the meaning could be, uh, when it gets meaning, it becomes information, and then re the red could mean self-facing traffic light on corner of Pitt and George streets ha had, has turned red. If you add to that context, uh, I which means how does this information, uh, uh, what, what, does, uh, what do I have to do with this information? Uh, the traffic light I am driving towards has turned red. Uh, so now I'm in the picture as well. And, and knowledge, information, and data are all about the past. And now we're talking about the future. So applied, I'd better stop the car. Or if you're in Israel, I'd better speed up. Um, so so when, when, when we understand that, that, that this uh, model is based on how, what are the decisions and what are the actions that we're going to take in the future, then it's obvious that uh, there's a lot of interest involved. So getting it, it to the top of the pyramid is actually, is, should be, uh, very um, contested because there's a lot of um, um, th there's a lot of people or uh, interest that would want you to get to a, to a, to the tip of the pyramid that would be somewhere else. So every step of the way um, it makes makes the reading of the data uh, different, and that is and and climbing up the DIKW model. Uh, the DIKW pyramid is one of the main reasons to do data visualization. So um, in our little uh, kind of live experiment in line with data, um, we'll use the, the separation of content, structure, and presentation. Um, content would be um, everything that we could say. Um, structure would be what we chose to say, the, the editing, um, um, what we, we took from that data set or that, that data set, we put it together. Um, and and presentation uh, would be coming, uh, would be the, the visual representation, or, or the visual representation, the, the styling, uh, so even, even styling of language can be, can be thought of as presentation, and, and there were some uh, discussions of presentation. For, for, the, for the more technical here in the room, um, the content you put in a database, uh, structures you build with uh, uh, um, um, template uh, like PHP or Python or whatever. Um, no JS, right? Okay. Um, um, and uh, the presentation would be the CSS, okay? If we're talking web technology. So let's start with um, lying with the content. Um, so j just to put it straight, I, I'm not talking about lying as saying things that are wrong. Uh, I'm I'm, I'm trying to, to, to think of how can we lie with the truth. So the truth can be ma manipulative. Um, when we're doing the workshops, um, I ask students to misrepresent them, uh, represent themselves. Tell, tell us something true about themselves uh, that is actually misleading. Um, and you've all done that. Uh, just look at your bios. Um, we're, we're true to, to the data and false to reality. Th this is our rule. So just a uh, quick show of hands. Uh, should the killing of babies be legalized? Th should the killing of babies be legalized? Yeah. No, yeah people like babies here. Um, okay, so let me try another question. Uh, should women have the right to their own body? Okay, so people like women more than they like babies. Um, or I could ask it in another way, uh, should abortion be legal? Um, yeah. So this could be um, different levels of, of, um, of uh, different ways of asking the same question. 
Um, some people w w would argue that uh, the, w the way I formulized the first question um, is equal to this. Uh, some would argue against that. But, but obviously the kind of results that we would get from asking these three different questions uh, would be different. So even when we're talking about uh, data, and it's not only poll data, it's every type of data. You can't really uh, look, th there's nothing, l raw data is, is an oxymoron. Like there is no raw data. Uh, data is always uh, produced. Um, so we got that out of the way. Let's get into structure, the editing. So we're still in, ad in abortion and when, um, when uh, Gallup has, uh, has tried to poll Americans about this question, uh, they framed the, the question I using this language. With respect to the abortion issue, would you consider yourself to be pro-choice or pro-life? These are the two terms used in the American debate. This is one of the biggest um, political um, and cultural um, debates in, in the US. Um, and it's very, very polarizing. Um, pro-choice be being uh, uh, pro-abortion, uh, pro-life being against abortion. There is no against here. It's just pro and pro. Um, and and what the the results they got are pretty obvious. You could see it in this table, right? Yeah, you can't really read the table very fast and understand the inside of it. That's why we have visualization, uh, and that's uh, why they made this graph. And now you understand it much faster. Um, so as you can see, um, in the mid fifties, uh, most of America. Uh, by a large amount has been a uh, pro-choice, uh, pro-life has been growing, pro-choice has been um, deteriorating uh, to the level of, a, I would say, fluctuations since um, uh, the end of the 90s. But you could also say, strong shift in opinion on abortion, because that would sell the paper much better. And, 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 the, and this is a title, um, th this is from uh, the AP, uh, quoting the exact same uh, Gallup poll. Um, adding a title and adding um, annotation that, that, that actually um, uh, directs a, a certain way of reading the same uh, graph. There are stylistic uh, uh, differences as well, but let's move on. Because when we look at the same uh, study as, conduct, uh, as reported by um, um, live, liveaction.org, it looks like this. So... There's no title here, but you see what's going on. Um, if you're pro-choice, you, choice, you're losing. If you're pro-life, you're winning. Um, any more manipulation that you can see here or uh, something that... Okay, timeline, uh, zero base, color. Uh, the color is kind of weird because it doesn't uh, correspond with, uh, with, uh, lib uh, with um, uh, liberal and conservative. Um, but uh, anything else that you might notice? The okay, the y-axis is partial. Okay, so you on only now notice the age. So this is not the full data. This is abortion views 18 to 29 years old. Uh, they chose to only look at the data that they got from, from uh, uh, from people responding from the age of 18 to 29. And, you, and you, most of you have not even read that. And if you have read it, 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 you're kind of glancing over it. Oh, 18 to 29, I shouldn't worry about it. I guess that's the age where people, when people get abortions, which is not true, right? Um, so so the, the, this is specific sampling of the data, the truthful data but a very specific sampling of the data that gives you uh, this specific image. Um, and I, I used the same graph uh, to with, with the actual um, uh, white data without this filtering, and this is what I got. Um, it's much less conclusive, plus I added another time, uh, uh, another, another breakpoint, um, and you can see that this is far from being as, as dramatic as as it looked before. So th th there's nothing wrong about, about the, day, the way the data is uh, represented here, and still it's manipulative. Um, and just following the, the same uh, poll going forward, you can see the fluctuation has continued since 
um, and still continues. This is something that uh, uh, that America is still s U.S. still split on abortion. The 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 titles of of uh, of uh, we're seeing a graph going up, uh, which is obvious that it would continue going up, right? Because this is kind of the veloc velocity of the graph going in that in that direction. Yes, uh, yeah. And, uh, and uh, another point that uh, about this, the sample size was very very selective as well. They also chose not to start, uh, not to talk about the 90s uh, at all. Yeah. Well, uh, they, they do. They do uh, reference the Gallup, uh, uh, the Gallup poll, uh, uh, which you, which which is a pretty credible uh, source. Um, so, moving on to the fun part, this is presentation. This is the aesthetic part. Um, this is where uh, the most manipulation can happen, and uh, um, as lively as can as we can. Uh, we're still in the field of um, of abortion. Um, so this is from live uh, uh, livecitizen.org. Um, abortion in the United States. Uh, so let's just look at the world. Uh, there's uh, like seven billion people in the world, uh, 133 million per year, um, uh, and you can see that a mother that gives birth is a mother that has uh, is kind of a, a very basic icon that has that carries a baby, and the, uh, and there's a carriage, uh, a baby carriage. Uh, uh, Ne next, next to it, I don't know why, but it's there. Um, and then, how would you represent uh, abortions, um, uh, uh, like objectively, if not by by this um, remi uh, th th this mashup of uh, toilet women uh, recycling and fetuses? <laughs> okay, like throw the baby. Um, Forty-two millions per year. Um, so, and and if you just uh, uh, um, lo look at how many people, how many mothers are throwing their babies into the garbage in, in the world in comparison to how many uh, mothers are, are throwing their, their, their babies uh, to the garbage in the U.S. Um, so apparently uh, the two left women, the, the, the brown one and the, and the turquoise one, uh, they're American, right? Um, so that's like most, li like... Uh, Almost a third of babies uh, being uh, aborted uh, in in the world are American. Oh, actually, um, the 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 mothers at the top are ten million each, and the mothers at the bottom are one million each. Well, you could have read the the labeling. You know, it's not uh, it's not manipulative. It's just you not reading. Um, so. The, the, there are so many uh, chunks of, of data that you're just go going one after the other and uh, after the other, and, and you're expected to to, to um, invest so, some um, some critical thinking um, wh when there's so many data points go going one after the other, one after the other, one after the other, and and can you really think about uh, critically about about these uh, about these data points when you have four Colorful baby throwing mothers just on top, uh, on the bottom, and why? Uh, and, and who are, who are the, these these evil mothers that throw their babies to the garbage? Um, so you see that um, there are thirty. Uh, the, mo most of most of the U.S. are white, uh, 69 percent, but but the but the 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 amount of uh, of abortion is equal between white and black. Because black w w black mothers loves the babies much less, right? Um, sa same with the uh, Hispanic and the uh, and the so-called other. I would say the other other. Um, they 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 chose to to look at it through race, as if this is the right question. This is again coming back to the question of asking the question. Um, and and uh, and even more interesting over here, what are the reasons for? Um, for abortion, um, so only one percent race uh, rape and, and incest. incest. Um, Six percent potential health problems, and let's just call all of the other categories the ninety-three percent of social reasons. Um, and you're probably asking yourself, what do they mean by social reasons? So they they were kind enough to give us an example: the child is unwanted or inconvenient. 
right? Um, there might be other categories there, but these are the ones that kind of represent the rest. Um, they could have chosen to, to show us the results by socioeconomic um, uh, condition, but I guess it wouldn't have told the story the, s the way they want it. So by now, um, you figured out that the, the, the conservative right is manipulative and probably the, the, the left is wholesome and, 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 and honest. Um, yeah, no, not really. Um, so, so this is a, a very a powerful poster. Um, and, and as soon as I saw this poster, I was like, I, I loved it. It, it was conforming to, to uh, my... Uh, uh, perspective. Uh, it was uh, telling a, a, a ma making a point in a very elegant way. For every person who dies in a terrorist attack globally, 58 people in the U.S. die due to lack of healthcare. Invade a hospital. Um, so we ha we see 58 uh, skulls, uh, more than we can count, which is also powerful. Um, and we can see only one little cute skull. Um, that is the terrorist skull, um, and I I in our in our strong kind of pattern recognition, uh, both visually and culturally, we see health, we see death, we see, we see a mass, we see bright colors, we see seduction. Uh, the answer is no healthcare equals worse than terrorism. Uh, the subtext is you are being terrorized by denial of healthcare. Um, the sub sub subtext is we will terrorize you to, uh, to convince you that, that you need health care. <laughs> um, there are manipulations here on every level. On the data le le level, who even defines uh, who dies from terrorism and who even defines who dies from lack of potential health care? Um, so I dug, I, I dug in and I found out that the State Department defines who's a, who's a terrorist globally uh, and before 9/11, or, or before before the invasion of uh, of Iraq, um, they they were they were counting much more uh, deaths as te as terrorist uh, as deaths from terrorist attacks. Uh, and then after the invasion, they were counting much less to prove that they're winning. Um, so you count in one way if you want to make the case for the war, and you count in a different way if you're trying to to create a different case. Um, and when it comes to who dies from lack of health care, the numbers actually came from an organization that is trying to advocate for health care. So are they uh, the right broker for, for this data? Um, the kind of sampling, the, the t taking both data sets, what do these data sets even have in common? Why are they both there? Um, and visually, you know, th this little skull kind of, to me, it looks more li like uh, maybe a pirate skull. A and the mass of many uh, scary skulls together, to me, it looks like a, much, a, a mass grave. Um, so this is a very um, sophisticated manipulation um, that, I that is really uh, going, um, in my book, above, uh, 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 above lines to, to drive its story. And one, one, uh, one of the leading thinkers that was uh, quoted uh, with a more and less a snarky tone uh, um, before is Edward Tuft or Tufti, depends on, I don't know, Tuft or Tufti? Tufti, right? Okay. Um, so he, he has a book uh, called Beautiful Evidence, um, and, and he presents this dog that jumps and hits the water. Um, and, and when he's defining what he means by beautiful evidence, he, he quotes the, a, a, colleague, a colleague of, a, of Galileo, Francesco Cesi, uh, who wrote uh, that Galileo's 38 uh, hand-drawn images of sunspots uh, delight both by the wonder of the spectacle and the accuracy of expression. Um, and for, for him, this, was th this is what he means by beautiful evidence, this, this moment when when the truth uh, meets beauty um, in, this, in this perfect way. And, um, and to, to be fair, T Tufti is very, very critical of, uh, of manipulative uh, visualization. But at the same time, he proposes th this term, beautiful evidence. 
Um, and I would say to think of, of, of visualization as, as evidence is really wrong because it's, it's actually masquer masquerading as evidence. It's seductive and, and manipulative. I would say it's a beautiful argument. Um, and an argument is is legitimate. It's not like we don't need arguments or arguments are only are always uh, manipulative. Um, le let's, um, uh, le let's talk about the, ki the kind of uh, the, the, ki the kind of visualizations that we can see. There's uh, the explanatory ex uh, visualization that explains something through, through a, a visual representation. Uh, there's the exploratory, and we talked a lot about uh, visual analysis. And there's the exhibitionary, um, ma mainly uh, visualizations that are there to create a nice picture. Um, there are different le levels of uh, legitimacy to each one of the, the approaches, depending on the, on the context. But when we're talking about the ex explanatory, what does it try to explain? Uh, is it an apolitical message, like a dog hitting water makes a splash? Or is it depoliticizing a message? The co uh, correlation of race and socioeconomics uh, affects abortion rates. And, and, and that is a critical point. So um, when we're talking about da data visualization, we have uh, reality on one corner, uh, which we, uh, we um, experience mainly visually. And we have data on the other corner, uh, which is the construct of language. Uh, we would try, uh, m many try to imagine this imaginary, objective, apolitical line that goes directly between re reality and data, uh, but it doesn't really exist. What about graphics? Well, the graphics are really way up there in the pyramid, very, very far from this uh, um, imaginary, objective line. They are the construct of visual language. The visual um, li th th they're experienced vi visually like you experience reality, but they're a construct of language just like data. So, so for, for graphics to be up there is, is presented as this kind of a problem for data visualization because it needs to be d uh, closer to this line, to, to, the, to this direct line between reality and data. So what happens is that we're pushing graphics down there, there's a, techno a technocratic and scientific tendency uh, for, for be that, that uh, strive for better understanding, better col com collaboration, common ground. But, but in its core, it's a fantasy. It's not, it's not what images should or even could do. Um, the result is an apolitical common ground. It's, n it's not an apolitical common ground, but a depolitization and often even propaganda. So I instead of pushing graphics up there, uh, in what I would define as disambiguation, um, and the w this word disambiguation is very interesting. I, the, the first time I, I encountered it uh, um, repeatedly was in Wikipedia. Right? When you go into wi a Wikipedia article, you go to a disambiguation uh, page uh, when, when um, uh, the term is not defined. You have to disambiguate this term because we cannot stand ambiguity. There's no room for ambiguity in computer land. Um, and you have to decide is it's this or this or that. Um, I don't think that's the role of the visual. I, thi I think ambiguity is very important within uh, visual culture. Uh, and, and there's a c certain problem when we're presenting visuals as if they are uh, disambiguated. In a way, if we need to do something t is to, to get graphics back to where they belong, uh, to, to, sorry, to re, uh, uh, kind of re-ambiguation. There's room for ambiguity even if we're using data, I in, in parallel to using data. If we take, a, a, um, if we take data and turn it a p uh, into a part of uh, language, into a part of discourse, we can still enjoy um, uh, knowledge, we can still enjoy um, a common ground, but not expect the, the, this, uh, the, this fantasy of a straight line between reality and data. Because the world we live in doesn't look like this. It's not a seamless world. If, if the, the, it's this moderni modernist uh, canonical uh, fantasy of seamless representation, um, it's I and, and it works perfectly with our vector graphics. Uh, but the world, I if to use a metaphor, looks much more like this. It's a sinful world. Um, and um, 
and, and I would like uh, I would offer to consider this most more modest and honest sinful approach that does not pretend to be perfect and does not hide the the, the fallible human process um, and, and, the, and the biases embedded in visual speech thank you questions I, I very much appreciate the biases, and there we had another presentation on that too. It's without knowing, having full knowledge of the of the situation, it's very hard to detect them. So, because there there are no signals there, no no red flags. So, if I know something's on Fox News, I should not pay attention to it. But that's my own bias, right? So um, it, it's very hard to pick up those things. I think that may be some of your point. Well, well, well that's basically what I'm trying to get to. It's it, like we have this fantasy that there is a, a place with no bias, and maybe data culture is that place. The, the, the we constantly strive there, um, and, and then we, we lower our, our guards. Um, in, in, a, in a way, there's another problem there, bec because we're... Um, the there's a lot of people in the room uh, that use uh, th that have the tools to speak with data, uh, to to turn uh, the representation of data into a part of their speech, um, and, and that's what I think it is. It's speech. Oh, sure. uh, but uh, but uh, not all of us have it. And and in and when we're talking about uh, graphicacy and uh, and and uh, um, visual literacy and so on. Uh, there's a problem when one side has the tools and the other one don't have the tools to speak back. So, so wha what I'm trying to argue, and it's an argument, um, that we should look at visualization as an argument. An argument is a very valuable tool um, I I in, in society. It's not something that is automatically a, a lie. It is an argument, and when I'm making an argument, you can, you can see that I'm using um, a certain style choices, and, and I'm using this word and not that word, and so on. But I'm not, uh, but I'm not speaking the word the word of God, right? I'm not speaking spewing truth through my words or my images, um, and we we can identify it with speech because we can all speak. But we uh, don't identify it as uh, as clearly with images because we can't all create the, the, these images, and that's the pro where the problem is. Well, I think the problem, in a way, is deeper, and that's that it, by the time we're presenting data in bar graphs or line graphs or however we're presenting it, it looks like facts, not like claims. And again, we're used to t we're used to being suspicious of of language. Right? You might say pro-life, and I'd say a, you know, right, to, right to life or right to abortion, and that already identifies us politically yeah. as one side or another. But it's, it's just, we don't, I'm not sure there's a way that we can do the same with bar graphs and line graphs. I, I think w uh, we, I would like to think that we're currently in a transi transition, because the, the reason we, we're here uh, in this conference and have so many different uh, practices in the room is because something is happening with the visualization right now that is becoming so uh, important into the public debate um, that, that, uh, that the power is really getting stronger. Um, I think as practitioners and as researchers, we need to actually lead uh, because we understand the biases and we, and we understand the context for which to, to read visualization, we need to lead by example and, and saying, uh, uh, b by presenting this as a part of, uh, uh, as an argument rather than an ev evidence. It's not, so it's not the smoking gun or, or the knife at the back, uh, so something that you can't argue with. It should be something to argue with. And, and if it would be an, something to argue with, we can actually uh, get the best out of it and, and to really challenge the data, to really ch challenge its representation and, and to, to get the best out of this, uh, of what uh, visualization has to offer. Anybody else? Hi there, thanks. Um, 
I'm going to combine uh, two fields. We were talking about this at the break. I come from animated documentaries, okay? And I think, in a way, we're both dealing with something very similar because, of course, in documentaries, it's an argument. There is no objective truth either. But because in documentaries, we're so used to associating uh, the representation with photography, that becomes a starting point. And therefore, when you use animation, it alerts viewers to that sense of interpretation. Whereas you're talking about data visualization, and I think in a way, people are maybe more accustomed to receiving uh, numerical data within these graphics. And I was wondering, and that maybe makes them less aware of the manipulations made through the visuals. And I was wondering if you could say something about yeah. just the fact that we're used to getting um, numerical data in a certain way, but other information in that way. So, so what I like about uh, about um, even this idea of um, of um, animated documentaries is that, it, as you said, it, it's it, it's kind of pointing. You know where animation is coming from. It's a it's a form of art first and foremost, um, and steamboat willy, right? Um, not um, frontline, um, and and that is a healthy way of looking at at a statement and uh, at an argument. Um, and that is something that animated re um, documentaries do. They, 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 t they remind you of, of the human perspective. Now, the history of data visualization is very much rooted in the science and with all of the allure that comes around it. And, it, and it's still you know, practiced uh, quite widely, even growing within the sciences. But it's, it's expanding more and more and more into our everyday life and our rep representation uh, in very different fields. But it still carries with it the baggage, the, the cultural baggage of, of this is science. Um, and even if, if science is to be argued with, it should be argued by scientists, not by me. And that's what, what I'm trying to say. Uh, that, that if, we're, if we want to make visualization relevant to wider fields of culture, we need to, to separate at least a bit the, the, this culture of, of scientific debate um, or, 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 or uh, contextualize it or expand it. Okay. Well, this will be the last question for this session. Hi. Um, First of all, thanks, Michelle. It's it's amazing, and it's um, um, it's really debatable um, this topic. Um, but I want to ask you, as as an educator, I feel that like data visualization becoming to be more and more popular, um, not just because of technology, it's because of the generation that the youngest, the younger generation than us, let's say, that kind of used to visual communication, emojis and uh, sport uh, showing statistics as the, as the main event, not the, the game itself, and so on. Um, do you feel that this is a matter of um, the next generation that need to be raised into understand um, that there is, a, there is a, this is the right way to argue with each other based on facts and based on statistics or visualization, or it's a matter of technology? Well, I think, I think it's a matter, the, the reason it's important for me to make this point here is, is because um, I, I think it's a part of our role to make sure that, the, that visualization serves the, the role it needs to serve in, in culture. Um, to to expand its uh, its use within discourse, and uh, I'll give you an example. Um, uh, it, in the public knowledge workshop, we're working now on a on a feature in the in the open budget uh, in the O budget site um, to to allow people to create tours through the data to to tell stories. There's, there's this debate between. Uh, uh, a, storytelling and the data worlds um, and it's kind of two sides kind of arguing from both sides and, and we're trying to say we can have stories within worlds and you can lo look at the, at the data within its uh, um, seemingly neutral representation or a, a, present, a representation that doesn't try to tell you what to think about it uh, immediately um, and you can tell your own story there. Just 
point at this data, uh, data point, point at that data point, take me to another, uh, to, to another item, maybe take me to another site, and tell me how are you looking at this data, and then I'll, t I'll, I'll let you know how I'm looking at this data. So, so even, even, even if it's not about uh, um, different representations or, or, or immediately giving everybody all of the tools for representation, um, inviting people to, to debate and to use visualization not, again, not as an evidence, but, but as a context for a conversation. Great, thank you very much. <laughs> very interesting.